There were once two boys who went skating on a frozen lake. And as they were enjoying themselves, the ice cracked, and one of the boys fell through the cracks into the icy water. His friend tried with all of his might to save his friend, but he was too late. His friend got swept underneath the current and was stuck underneath the ice. Desperate to save his friend, this scrawny boy quickly looked around and saw a tree in the distance. He rushed over, pulled down a giant branch, rushed back, and started smashing and thrashing away at the thick ice. Finally, he was able to break through the thick ice, pull out his friend, and drag him to safety. When the ambulance came, they were able to resuscitate him, and miraculously, the boy survived. One of the younger ambulance members sat there dumbfounded, scratching his head, and he muttered out loud, How can such a scrawny kid break through such thick ice? Let alone pull down such a giant branch. It's impossible. I don't get it. An older ambulance member sat next to him and smiled. I'll tell you how he did it. How? How did he do it? There was no one there to tell him that he couldn't. Now what could we possibly do if we didn't listen to that voice inside us that tells us we can't, but instead we listen to that still small voice within us that tells us we can? Let's explore a deep topic connected to this week's Parsha. In Parsha Shemos, we're introduced to Moshe Rabbi, perhaps the greatest person who's ever lived. Moshe not only led the Jewish people out of Mitzrayim, but also received the Torah in Harsina. He fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, surpassing all human boundaries or limitations. And the Torah itself even testifies that no one reached the level of Nevuah that Moshe was able to attain. Yet, the Rambam in Hilchah Shuva says something absolutely shocking. He claims that everyone is able to become a tzaddik like Moshe Rabbeinu. How is this possible? Not all of us are able to become leaders, let alone become the greatest leader in human history. So what does the Rambam mean? We can take this question a step further. The Gemara in Nida, the Flan and Beis, has a cryptic and perplexing line. The Gemara says that just before each of us are born, Hashem makes us take a nether, an oath, that we will become a tzaddik. But once again, we face a problem, an oath is a guarantee, a promise. How can we promise that we'll be a tzaddik? Not all of us are cut out to be great, to be a tzaddik. How can we explain this strange Gemara? So let's begin by going back to the beginning of that same Gemara in Nida, Daklam and Amabiz. The Gemara discusses a very enigmatic tale describing the initial stage of your formation. The Gemara explains that when you were just a fetus, you were in a perfected and transcendent state of being, while in utero, a malach taught you kol ha-Torah kula, all of Torah, and you understood all of reality in a crystal clear lens. However, the Gemara continues with a very anticlimactic punch, literally. Just before you were born, the Malach struck you on the mouth, causing you to forget everything you learned. So two obvious questions arise. Number one, why does the Malach make you forget what you've learned? But more importantly, if he's going to make you forget it, why even teach it to you in the first place? Changing the way we view the human mind, the Vilna Gon answers as follows. He explains that when you learned all of Torah, it doesn't mean you were learning Chumash and Rashi. Rather, it means that you were learning your Torah. You were being shown your unique purpose in the world, how your unique role fits into the larger scheme of the human story as a whole. You were given a taste of your own perfection, of what you could, should, and hopefully will become. But most importantly, you didn't lose it. Rather, you lost access to it. Instead of disappearing completely, this state of self became buried deep within your subconscious. And the reason is as follows. What you received in the womb wasn't real. It was merely a gift. 
something unearned, undeserved. But the goal of life is to come into this world and resurface all that you once were in the womb. However, this time, it will be real since you've built it yourself. In essence, your job in this world is not to create yourself, but to recreate yourself, to re-attain your original state of perfection as you were shown by the Malach. This time, however, it has to be done through free will by choosing to become great. Only by overcoming challenge and difficulty and asserting your willpower can you fulfill your true potential. We can now begin to explore the nature of the human condition. As the Ramchal explains, everything in your life is here to help you fulfill your unique role. Many people are unhappy with the life they have. They're constantly comparing their lives to those around them, always searching for another reason to complain. But if only we understood that we were each given a unique package, we'd find so much more joy in life. Your body is the exact body you need to carry you through this world. Your psychological clothing, which includes your intellect, imagination, memory, emotions, and personality, were perfectly crafted and designed for you and your unique role in this world. You were born into a specific family, at a specific time period, were sent to a specific school, into a specific community, or exposed to a particular set of social influences. All of these things are part of the reason you are who you are. And everything in your life is there only to help you grow and become the person you were meant to become. To resurface what you once had in the womb, to recreate your ideal self. Your job isn't to become great, it's to become you. Many people struggle to find their target, their purpose in the world because they're looking in the wrong place. You can't find your role by looking outside. You can only find it by looking deeper inside within yourself. Because true growth requires us to grow from within. We need to go into a room by ourselves and ask the difficult and real questions. Who am I? What drives me? What makes me unique? What are my talents? What are my passions? What can I contribute to the Jewish people and the world as a whole? With this in mind, we cannot understand why comparison and jealousy are completely illogical. If each of us are unique and different, how can you compare yourself to anyone else? As Einstein famously said, if you judge a fish on its ability to climb a tree, it will spend its whole life thinking it's a failure. You can't compare yourself to someone else since you're completely different. If we genuinely understood this, we would never be jealous. Once you realize that everything in your life is exactly what you need to fulfill your unique potential, you'll stop looking around at what other people have and start utilizing what you have. To take it a step further, you can actually begin to be happy for other people's success, since you'll realize that we aren't competing with each other. We're all on the same team. We're all part of this cosmic symphony called life. Your ear would never be jealous of your hand. Since they're both part of the same body, but so too if you realized that we're all part of the same body. That same cosmic self, you'd never be jealous of anyone else. We're all part of Klyusro. Now we can return to our original questions. As many explain, a tzaddik doesn't mean someone who is great. It refers to someone who fulfills their role and actualizes their unique potential. Tzaddik literally means correct. It refers to the truth. Becoming a tzaddik means living your truth, bringing your unique potential into actuality. When the Gemara says that we each made an oath to become a tzaddik, it's referring to our promise to fulfill our unique role in this world. We each have our mission. Some will be on the front lines, while others are more behind the scenes. But both are tzaddikim. Both are fulfilling their unique role. As Rabbi Chana Wasserman explains in his Maimarim, when the Rambam explains that each of us can become a tzaddik, like Moshe Rabbeinu, he specifically uses the word tzaddik. Because 
We may not be able to become as objectively great as Moshe, but we can each become subjectively as great. Just as Moshe fulfilled his unique potential, so too we can fulfill our unique potential. That's what it means to be a tzaddik. When Michael Jordan was once interviewed, he said, how do you think I became who I became? Who do you think I competed against? If I competed against others, I'd never have become who I am. I would have settled once I was the best, but I competed against myself, the person I knew I was meant to become. I wanted to become better than I was, the best me. Everyone else made the mistake of competing against me and not competing against themselves. So they all fell short and felt like they weren't great. It's time to take the next step in your journey through life. Just like the boy from the lake story, it's time to say, yes, I can. We need to stop holding ourselves back from our own greatness. Because you've got greatness within you and it's your responsibility to bring that greatness to the world. Because in truth, we can all become a tzaddik like Moshe Rabbeinu.